but I, I was completely enamored of the uh, illusion that was Jim Bailey. Um, and I remember one time, though, when I was a little kid, probably, probably well, kid, before, right in adolescence, uh, there was an ad in the paper and he was coming, I was at my grandmother's house in Pittsburgh. I grew up in Baltimore, but I was in Pittsburgh and there was a place called the Holiday House. And, and Jim Bailey was coming to the Holiday House and had like a picture of him as Judy, you know, in the ad and Barbara in profile in the ad. And uh, I thought, oh, I, I, I had this kind of wash of excitement and panic that my family would know I was looking at that and that I wanted to go. Like, like somehow they would all know. So I remember thinking that there was something very exciting about a public person being a, a female impersonator, which was the closest thing at that time as a, ch as a kid that I could associate with something being gay because I, my romantic attraction was, was men. And most of them in my life were straight. really need to read to understand where we got, how we got to here, how we got to today, is Larry Kramer's Reports from the Holocaust. It is not a work of fiction, it's a series of essays that explain the rise uh, at, of the AIDS epidemic and how that turned into activism, which turned into a movement forward. And how from AIDS, it doesn't talk about this, but from that AIDS activism essays that he wrote for the New York Native and various other newspapers and the begin the speech that he wrote which was the beginning of ACT UP which gave us Queer Nation which now if you look in the Huffington Post pages they're called Queer Pages well that's because Queer Nation claimed the word and we claimed it back from the negative vernacular um, there's, there's a book of poetry which was also made into a movie and I recommend both it's by an African-American named Essex Hemphill, and it's called Tongues Untied. And it's a slim volume of books. He died mm, in the early 1990s of AIDS. He was black. Marlon Riggs was a wonderful filmmaker who made a very unusual movie out of these poems about the gay black male experience. I was so profoundly moved by those poems and that movie. Um, it was, it's a performance art, it's a work of art. The book is about intimacy between men and specifically about black men. It was again, me trying to find a kind of brotherhood with beyond skin, with uh, gay men. It wasn't about sex, although there's a lot of sex in the poetry and there's talk about sex, but it was about the conflicts, both the book and the poems and the movie, about the conflicts between white men and black men within the gay male community. Good old gay movies to see. Another one, of course, because I'm in it, is Longtime Companion. It was my, my SAG card. I have a lot of long hair and big glasses from the late 80s. And, uh... Again, it was written by Craig Lucas, who's a brilliant playwright, and uh, who wrote uh, Prelude to a Kiss, amongst many other plays and musicals. But he uh, really witnessed a moment in time that would never have given us the HBO, uh, the Normal Heart, or Looking, or any of these other kinds of TV shows and um, movies had he not witnessed this group of gay men going through the first throes of the AIDS epidemic. And it's Dermot Mulroney's best performance ever. What's another good movie? Now, as a kid, growing up, what's really necessary from my generation to yours is Valley of the Dolls. You have to watch Valley of the Dolls. You have to appreciate it and understand the nuances of it. Now, there's also another movie called The Women by George Cooker, which comes from a generation that my grandparents were watching in the movie theaters. Um, now, for a lot of gay men, maybe in my generation and previous ones, uh, maybe not so much now, there's two different kinds of fag, which is the Valley of the Dolls fag and the women fag. And the women fag tend to gravitate towards men as their ideal, 
and the Valley of the Dallas fag tends to gravitate towards career as their primary goal. That's the one I went to because I was a showbiz fag rather than, oh, I had to dress up and be nice for my man fag. So respect your sisters and your brothers who like one or the other. Get to know them, though, because there's some very funny characters, some very funny lines, unintentionally so in Valley of the Dolls. Um, I just highly recommend it. And the fashion is awesome. For me, it's more about the musical theater gene because there's only one person to listen to, and he's gay, and he's a genius, and he is Stephen Sondheim. And anything that he has written is of value. But the ones that you may know, because they may be made into big movies, and they're awesome, they're terrific, is Into the Woods, which if you look at it from like the uh, the idea of leaving your family and having to recreate a family is very true to many of our experiences. Uh, it's a very beautiful, beautiful, wise story. Another one that's good, that's also been rumored to be gay, is Company. That Bobby is actually the reason he won't get married at the center and he's surrounded by straight friends who want him to get married, join the club, Bobby, is that he's gay. Now, whether or not he is, is kind of irrelevant to me. But the essence of his loneliness and the essence of his needing and his essence to need to connect with somebody is timeless. We are very lucky as a community to have Stephen Sondheim uh, as, an, as, uh, as one of our own. And of course, I wrote The Night Larry Kramer Kissed Me because I was inspired by seeing Larry Kramer's play The Normal Heart. N not because he actually kissed me, although you can read the play or see the movie version, or you can do the play if you want. You can license it <laughs> um, uh, uh, and find out exactly that he actually, there is a, a, there is a little kiss in it. Um, but it was a metaphor for the night I saw his play, The Normal Heart, which really opened my eyes to the way the world was happening in when I was about mm, 21, 22 years old. And that was the explosion of the AIDS epidemic in New York City. And that was my coming of age as a, a gay man. And that was, when we come of age, it means we have a responsibility, I think, to do something with our age to do something with ourselves. And inside that play, The Normal Heart, which was made into a brilliant movie for HBO, I thought, it became, I came to, and it meant I was responsible as well. And plays can do that. Somebody else you should talk to, somebody who's coming, who's the future of our, our uh, uh, our art, our politics, and our culture is Taylor Mack. I had the great joy of working with him on two different projects. His solo show, The Beast of Taylor Mack, which I directed, as well as being a director of The Lily's Revenge, which was a fantastic, epic experience that we did. It's a five-hour show. Um, Taylor's worldview and his politics and his art are going to lead us into the future in a profound way. I truly believe that. Paris is burning. I think the kids are pretty aware of that one, though. They're not? They're not aware of it? God, that's the movie that keeps on giving, man. It's